So you want to know why it's difficult to stand out in college applications? Let's look at Clemson University. Clemson is a land-grant state school in South Carolina. Clemson has just under 22,000 total undergraduate students. These numbers are from 2022 for first year or freshman students. Clemson received this many applications. In this demonstration, every ream of 500 pieces of paper represents 2,000 student applications. Now to give you perspective, your one application is represented here. In our Clemson example, about this many applicants are offered admissions. And now, how many students end up enrolling at Clemson? Let's see. Last year, Clemson received 52,819 applications. They accepted 22,704 students, and their first year class enrolled 4,588 students. They rejected about 30,000 students, and 18,000 students who gained acceptance decided not to attend Clemson. We picked Clemson because their statistics are indicative of many colleges and universities. So if you are applying to a school that accepts more than 90% of applicants, the accepted pile would be much larger. However, the number of students accepting their admittance will stay in about the same range. If you apply to a school with a 10% or less acceptance rate, this stack would be much smaller. Top tier colleges tend to accept many of the same students, so the difference between their accepted and admitted piles still has a ratio, making the accepted pile larger as these students have to decide between two or three or 10 top tier schools. You don't have to worry too much about the acceptance statistics for the school you are interested in. Your focus must be on making your application the best it can be. Admissions are a bit of a numbers game. Increase your chances by increasing the quality of your applications. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is How to Stand Out as a College Applicant. Before we go any further, let us point out that it takes a dedicated staff to work through any portion of these 53,000 applications. And yes, every application submitted to every school goes through a prescribed evaluative process. If you don't believe me, follow any of the admissions reps at the schools you would like to attend on social media. You will find notes about needing to adjust their eyes after reading so much, the joy their critters bring them while they are plugging through the applications, or notations on the conflicts they see with the applicants wanting to know their status right now, while wanting decision makers to pay special attention to their application. College admissions decisions aren't easy and they take lots of time by many university employees. Your goal is to do everything possible to go from this pile to this pile. If you make it to this point, the decision leaves the hands of the university or college and the power is all yours. If you choose to attend that school, you move to this pile and become a student at Clemson or whatever school is essential to you. So you want your application to stand out for all the right reasons. However, there are times when your application stands out for the wrong reasons. These reasons may well be why your candidacy does not move forward. First, do not submit late. Do not forget to respond to every point of the application. Submit references or your transcript or your test scores if needed. Do not forget to proofread your application. Numerous grammatical issues or leaving the name of another university in your prose will make your application less than impressive. Do not use your social media accounts to disparage others for any reason. Clean up anything less than stellar that you have posted well before sending in any application. The colleges you apply to may well look at what you thought was important enough to share with the world under your name. Tell the truth. Do not overrepresent your accomplishments. Don't make up experiences. You are enough. Reflect who you are in your applications. Do not give the school a reason to remove your application from the competition for admissions based on your not having done your best work. 
So now let's focus on how you can stand out in this stack for positive reasons. Under the do listing, we need to include things that can be done well before you write your applications. Let's start with what you can do as a high school student before you hit your senior year. Expand the quality of the courses you are taking. Look for challenging courses, look for a wide variety of courses, and look for teachers who will challenge your intellect. When possible, take dual or concurrent enrollment courses, AP, IB, or other coursework designed to mimic the rigor of college classes. As you plan your high school courses, meet state and district graduation requirements. Remember that your grade point average is not the only deciding factor, but it does provide a starting point for review. Several colleges have reported that up to 40% of their applicants have a GPA of 4.0 or above. So to stand out, you must ensure your transcript shows that you have taken challenging coursework. As we have said before, in this instance, getting a B in a challenging course can very well make you stand out above the applicant who receives an A in an easier course. If you have struggled at any point in your academic career, you want to show that you turned your GPA around and are getting better. You may also want to explain the challenges that led to your grades being less than you were capable of. And that is where the essay or reference letters come in. Many 4.0 students do not make it to the acceptance pile. You must be more significant than your grade point average. Work to find volunteer organization sport and employment opportunities that will bring you joy, make a difference in your life experiences, and expand your worldview. Get leadership experience, experience the concept of a team, and take on projects that will affect your community and work on those projects from beginning to end. Meet people, interesting people, people who are different from you, people who will challenge you and will support you. Teachers, counselors, clergy members, friends, coworkers, teammates, fellow volunteers, and people you meet in your day-to-day -day life. Learn from them, learn about yourself. Then make sure that a teacher or two, your employer, counselor, coaches, or others know you well enough to serve as references when writing your applications for college and scholarships. Research each college that interests you. Know as much as possible about the major you wish to pursue and the college's priorities. Start to look up their preferences for selecting students. What is the preferred range for GPA test scores, if collected, and their desires for the level of coursework you complete? Attend college fairs, meet admissions counselors, and ask questions. Establish a relationship with the admissions counselor assigned to your high school by that college. Then, practice for the testing and essay writing. That will help you stand out on your applications and be a substantial review of your coursework in high school. Learning how to write strong essays will benefit you throughout college and beyond. Don't forget to use your summers well, to raise money for college, to shadow those in the profession that you believe holds potential for you, to visit campuses, read anything and everything, and spend time thinking through who you are, what is important to you, and what you want to do with your life. Finally, write down names, dates, contact information, and awards won throughout your high school career. It will be easy to cut and paste into applications once all the data is collected. And trying to remember in July of your senior year what you did in August of your freshman year isn't always easy. So record as you go. And for those of you who are nearing the finish of your college application process, here are some more specific recommendations to stand out on your applications. A listing of your activities and awards is presented in the application. Ensure that your short answer and essay responses go well beyond regurgitating your resume. Tell the reader something about yourself that they can't get by reading your list. Talk about what you value and why. Talk about experiences, your family, your goals, your beliefs, or your view of the future. Share who you are through what you have done or despite what has happened to you. Use the essay to take the reader on a journey and don't write about what you think the admissions committee wants to hear. Write about what you need to say. Reading 50,000 essays can be mind numbing. Make sure your essay stands out as honest, insightful, and a reflection of who you are because you are different from the other applicants. Show the reader why. Read the applications carefully and provide the requested information. If there's an opportunity for supplemental documents, submit those documents. If not required, the request for those documents must mean something to the admissions committee or they wouldn't ask for them. Don't miss that opportunity. 
Learn how you collect the documents needed for your applications. For example, your transcript. You need to check the timelines and process for any document you need to submit with your application. Take the SAT or ACT and submit your scores to any school which desires to see such. Make your results available to colleges who accept or require scores. Utilize all early application processes that you can. Work to be ready to apply by the early deadline because more and more schools are using that process to build out their freshman year class. Look at your application as a whole. It is easy to get caught up in your essay, activities list, or transcript. Take a look at the entire picture that the decision makers see. Then shore up what you can well ahead of your applications being submitted. Your goal is to go from this pile to this pile to this pile. The only tool to get you there is your application. Do your best to make sure that application reflects who you are and what you have accomplished. Stand out. If you found any of this information useful, hit the like button or consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.